Is it me? Uh, or is this storm in Theta Crucis is moving? It's moving. Oh my god, this is not good. Oh god! Look at it go! The storm is nearly here. I've just lost two ships to weather events. The corpses floating the outside the station has a timer on it. Fuck you! It literally has just left the ship. It's been destroyed. What an asshole! This is a nightmare. A ship has been destroyed by a space weather event. You've got to be kidding me right now. Oh, Jesus Christ, is that a fire? Why is the water on fire? Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm going to die. Okay, well, at least we are the other side of the storm now. And our hull integrity is plus 10, which is good. And uh, we are getting iron and alloys in, albeit slowly. Now, I've moved the Tycon from the pressurized R&D district because that's a corpse field. And I found this planet over here. It's a little far away, uh, which means the ships are going to have to travel a little bit further. We have got some resource fields very nearby that I'm hoping my ships will um, go and deal with. I've only got one mining ship because of how many ships we lost in the last episode. So I'm in very much in a rebuild kind of state right now. Still, trust is good. Hull integrity is good. Power available is good. Uh, I'm currently working on sector six and trying to obviously get this up as a population center. They're now happy because I've put a DLS center in with intense propaganda. So they are being lied to and they're happy about it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, as far as dictatorial kind of policies go, we're in a good place. We are doing the traditional thing. So I'm going to get rid of all these roads here in Sector 6 now that I have gathered all the spare resources from here. And we're going to have a little bit of a planning session around here because already I'm not happy with the placement that I've done. It's all over the shop. It's everywhere. It's a bit rubbish. Um, the Sector 3 stockpile. I've got to check these accidents because sometimes they damage the buildings. Uh, so the situation as it is at the moment is we've got more than enough food. We've got 129% food production we have very full stockpiles of food everywhere which is fantastic it's okay eventually we will going in rid of this and i don't know what we're going to do with this space here maybe we can turn this into algae farms i don't know but we've got a uh, circuit factory and a polymer factory here i'm sorting my ships out the whale and the vitac are their primary function is to go and collect carbon However, I've got one mining ship at the moment. Now I've got two, actually. Tell a lie. Nope, I've got one mining ship at the moment. The Mammoth. And that is prioritizing iron, because obviously we need we need as much of that as possible to keep the hull going, keep these guys going here. Only one of these is actually worth switching on at the moment. Um, so, are you delivering iron? Sure, I hope so. There you go. Lovely. Keep the alloys coming in, please. Keep the alloys coming in. That's the main thing. And then obviously, yes, polymers are very important because they develop probes and we do need to probe thing. This is the thing. But I have discovered, like I said, resource fields around here is good. Um, so I'm trying to prioritize local fields over everything else. Local fields are stuff that I need, not freaking ice and hydrogen. Although I'm sure I'll be very happy about ice and hydrogen one day. Right now, iron and silicon. Can I get that ice in there as well? It's so fiddly, guys. It's so fiddly. <laughs> yeah, you get one or the other, or two of them, but not all three of them. That'll have to do. Um, we'll try and prioritize the local fields before I go and start heading this way to Kruk P43, I think, unless I can find another planet in between, but I don't think I can. Kruk P43 is where I want to send the Tycoon next when the resources over this side are closer. And then, I don't know, we'll see what happens to the storm once we start doing some missions with our science ship. Speaking of which, ruins of Orn 8. Um, so this is the crew of the Mendeleev. I don't know what freaking science ship we're on now. Three, four, five, I don't know, I can't keep track. This section of the wreckage is massive. We believe it's the remains of a research and development district. The laboratories we've seen look virtually destroyed, but we find an intact security room. A sign above its entryway reads Orn 8. To access the room, we'll need to power, we'll need power from the Tycoon via the RTP. Unfortunately, specific accreditation is also required to open the room's armoured door. The neighbouring residential area has collapsed, making the balance of this area unstable. We have spotted some emergency cryopods within the debris. Doesn't look like there was enough time for a full evacuation. Damn, I wish I read that before I sent the Tycoon off, because it looks like we're going to need the Tycoon penis. 
Search the laboratories. Maybe we don't. Let's see what we can do without the tycoon there, because I don't really want to move it back into a corpse field. If I'm completely and brutally honest, that is an undesirable thing. Now, hopefully we can get just enough polymers to build ourselves a new mining ship. And then we can prioritize that mining ship onto carbon and polymers. I'm wondering maybe if I just briefly switch this guy on to prioritize that. Just to get enough. Just to get enough. Um, so if we can get some carbon, there we go. Look, the cargo ships have been waiting for so long. They're like, we must wait. We have to wait until the carbon is free because there's enough iron for the cargo ships of sector one to pick up right now. So switch him over to carbon, get the carbon, get the polymer production started. And then we can switch him back once the new mining ship is built and he can go and do all the carbon stuff while the original guy focuses back on iron. Plan, that is the plan. Okay, uh, right, let's speed up eat and get this mission done. Meanwhile, Sector 6... Sector 6 has got a lot of population. 354 housing. So what I'm going to try and do is move all the non-workers into Section 6, basically. So we can start with Sector 1, which is... No, Sector 2. Let's start with that one. Uh, we've got, what, 354 houses, so we can definitely move... Ooh, just out of 200, so let's do 150 of them over from Sector 2 to Sector 6. Non-workers only. 150? They're not going to be happy about it, because they're going to be moving from balanced apartments or optimized apartments into cell housing. Um, but the plan with this... You can implement a new Lovely. Uh, the plan with this area is I'll do a few cell houses like this. The rest will be optimized quarters because I think if the majority of the population is in optimized quarters, it'll be okay. Okay, the science ship is done. Let's see what we got. 820 cryo plants. Okay, the laboratories were severely damaged by the, the pressurization. Most equipment has either been destroyed or is missing. A team found clear traces of laser cutting. Floors and walls have been ripped open, and the R&D district was a secure area studying not only space-related phenomena, phenomena, but also technologies considered forbidden by the UN. Recovered research reports mentioned Dolos, BMS, and Ashton Geit invention being studied. Also note, noted in the reports is the quarters location of the area's techno supervisor. They possess the accreditation required to open the security room's door. Okay, locate the techno supervisors within the residential area. Okay, it looks like we are probably going to have to move the Tycoon back, at least temporarily. Um, in that case, then, let's get some batteries for Sector 6, because they keep getting shut down. Every time I move the bloody Tycoon, they get shut down. Maintenance, batteries. Let's get at least two batteries in here. Again, uh, oh, I'm a bit unhappy about this layout, but it'll be okay. An accident always... Waste Treatment Center. Okay, that's fine. Science team. Everything's moving very quickly all of a sudden. Science team. Thanks for the information recovered from the laboratories. The team was able to locate the quarters of the area. Technic supervisor higher in rank, but their dwelling was of much larger size than basic crew accommodation and was filled with unknown technology. We've recovered their security key. Okay. Open. So the Tycoon needs to be in orbit. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, fine. We will come back to that then. Uh, I think we can now switch back this guy back to... High priority iron, low, lower priority carbon. We will need to get silicon prioritized as well. So is that... Let's have a look at sector two and hopefully there's a ship being built. No, there's carbon in. Polymers are being produced and... The Bardishi. Yeah, it's just literally finished. Okay, so your priority is those two. Okay. Right, so this place has got 5.8 power now. We can move the Tycoon and everybody will stay powered on. The only issue would be the hull integrity. But let's go ahead and start building up um, this sector a little bit in terms of quarters and whatnot. We need to, yeah, we need to go pretty hard here with kind of stability. So we will need 
alternative life center and so uh, center and so on and so forth. What now? This is never good. Administrator, we've been in the Theta cruiser system for too long. The crew is starting to doubt. Oh my God. The good news is that polymers are starting to flow. So that's good. All right. So I've moved the Tycon over here so we can now open on a security room. Let's do it. See what happens. Dad files on the floor of the security room controlled contained warnings about the prohibited nature of what was stored in the area beyond but behind a further door a long chamber was filled with occupied dollars cryopods numerous data disks full of scientific information were also discovered these finds are of incredible value on 8 pa upgrade unlocked for the tech lab Ooh, 150 alloys and a circuit board as well all right sweet leave the wreckage Let's get that science lab working on that straight away. So there you are, the PA, the ornate PA. The research cost of upgrades is reduced by 10%. Lovely. We've got a PA assisted research speed is 40% quicker as well. Let's do that one and then let's do the threat assessment as well. We've got 315 like science to get through here. So let's, uh, let's do it. Okay, I need to move the tycoon out of this sector again. Because I don't like being in this debris field. It's just gnarly. Um, an has in the and the closest place is truck P41. Although it does mean that the uh, travel distance time for everything is a little bit longer. I don't feel like moving over to truck P38 just yet. Uh, let's move our science ship over there actually. As well as the tycoon back again. Yes please, off you truck. Get out of this debris field. I'm moving the Tycoon a lot more than I used to right now. I'm a little less afraid of moving it now. I think it's just a case of, yeah, it just needs to go. Look, at the storm has moved on as well. It is, I'm hoping, will clear this area and we can move back over there as well. Okie dokie. New request. These are always fun. Okay. Administrator, among the items recovered from the Orn 8 security room was a prototype supercomputer based on PA architecture. It could be integrated into our tech lab computer system. Stanford protocols do discourage the use of externally sourced lab equipment. Launch the PA to assist using UN technology is out of the question. Uh... Oh boy. <laughs> you can control it, right? It's not going to go freaking mental and kill everything, is it? I mean, the UN, everything that I've found so far with the UN has been like murder dollars at all costs. Like they threw their entire freaking ship away on a pursuit of murdering dollars. So a big part of me is like, no, don't even touch anything UN. Just kill it straight away. Kill it with fire. Um, but the fun loving side of me wants to turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go, we've turned it on. Yay! Everything will be fine. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure of it. Right? Okay, Crook P41, new planet. Crook 41 is a, a telluric planet with a small quantity of water present as ice. There are many large black telluric formations across its surface, the atmosphere of blah, 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 blah. Uh, solid aluminium rain. What? Right. This is uh, the team. We have landed near Site O. We should be protected from the aluminium rain. We have located the formation of unknown origin and are commencing exploration of the site. Well, it's, it's spelt aluminum, yeah, because they can't spell apparently. Right, anyway. Investigate the formation. Three turns. The Tycoon is on the way to offer moral support in this situation. Look at all my little ships flying around. It is beautiful. It is lovely. None of them bothering to go get that alloy over there or the, or the circuit boards or anything. They will eventually. I'm sure of it. All right, there we go. We're back. Okay, get that hull restored, please. Thank you very much. Lovely. And we got a probe. Let us let us probe. We've actually unlocked more space here now. So I can actually maybe... Oh, look. Oh, look. Oh, look. Oh, look. There's a thing. There's a thing. The thing there. <laughs> what is the thing? Go find it. I'm hoping that as we uncover more science, like I said, this storm just Fs off and we got the system to play in. I, I've already got a stability penalty from being here too long, which I think is mental because I don't think I've been here as long as I was in the previous cycles. A science ship team. We will see. Okay, 
60 science. I like that. Team reports that the Tulip Formation is circular in shape and has steep sides. They have begun mapping the numerous tunnels that lead inside it. Initial reports suggest that those were not created by natural phenomena, but dug intentionally. Continued behavioral analysis of the team is registered breaches of dollar safety protocols as, as, as well as metaphysical and psychological aberrations. One crew member appears to have removed their protective helmet, convinced that the air in the tunnel was breathable. Accounting for P-41 atmosphere, their remaining lifespan is estimated to be 37 minutes. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Commencing DDoS attack. Flooding Eden Vigilance Network. The Medelev team will be able to act without constraint independence of Dolos prot protocol. Damn, just, just give them all the freedom, right? Just go nuts, guys. Don't worry about your mental health. It's fine. The team will continue their expedition and analyze the high levels of our uh, aluminum in P-41's atmosphere. I'm fearful for my team, but I want to save them. So continue to monitor. I do not want to just throw their lives away like, like they're worthless. Because they're not. They're worth something. A little bit, at least. Places are filling up here nicely. I've got a new medium storage as well, which is lovely. That's going to or lots of stuff. Thanks to intensive psychological and medical follow-up, the Medlev team uh, was able to conclude the study. Solid aluminum particles carried by the winds of P-41 created the network of tunnels. The erosive erosive process that transformed the topography of the planet. When the particles collide with each other inside the tunnels, their reverberation generates a low-frequency vibration. When this passes through the inner ear, it alters human neural activity. Okie dokie, leave the planet. I don't want to just like let them go leave the planet. We're okay with the amount of science you have accrued so far, guys. You've done well. Top job and all that. Collect that science and then we will move on to the medical district because that's going to be that's going to be fun for everyone. Oh, crap, P51. A new planet has been dis discovered. We should continue to probe, however. Oh, so many resources. It's beautiful. All right, so I've sent the science ship off to the P-51 site, new planet that I just discovered. Okay, they say the uh, P-51's atmosphere is an extremely high gas concentration. We are navigating through an almost semi-liquid environment. The tremendous pressure is putting the resistance on our suits to the test. And we reach the core, we are preparing to sort it out towards what appears to be a collection of geysers. The area that... Prov provided the environmental data right so we've got okay so we've got the options of intrusive blow it up set up a temporary one which gives us some science or set them an advanced which gives us lots of science we have lots of resources at the moment so i'm going to go with an advanced uh we're going to tell us sector one 1.2 yeah let's go with the quicksilver again there we go the quicksilver b Go and see what uh, what we get out of that planet. Interesting stuff. Okay, new probe is ready. This, yeah, we've just got we've got a lot of going around right now. Concentrating on this side, like I said, we'll move over here eventually. A probe has completed its scan. Right now, we're doing okay. We've got positive hull integrity, positive power. We are going to need a new so panel soon. I'm hoping the guys will start picking up some silicon soon. They've been neglecting that completely for carbon. Um, oh, we got another. I mean, we've got another massive silicon carbon source there, but there is another potential planet over here that we are going to be able to get soon as well. But we have discovered unusual bacteriological formations in the geysers of P-51. The bacteria are not only capable of arranging amino acids, but utilizing geyser emissions as binding agents. They restructure mineral deposits and carve out basins around the geysers. Further groups of bacteria were found within these basins. We have named the bacteria Myers and would like to carry out further behavioral analysis. 40 sciences. Conduct your analysis, my team. Just don't die. Don't get like taken over by bacteria or something stupid like that. Be sensible, yeah? Don't be dickheads. Nobody needs that. Right. <laughs> so sector six is coming along. It's getting there. I've increased the housing. I've moved the cryopod storage over. Um, we have a bit of a homeless situation. In Sector 6, 27 are homeless, despite poor cell housing, we can increase that. But I'd like to increase the number of uh, apartments, so two new apartments are going up over here. And um, yeah, okay, so food is still good, although at some point, given the size of the population, we are probably going to need to uh, 
have a second mess hole somewhere in here. So we can absolutely research that. That's going to increase our food yield even more. Food situation is 117%. So it's starting to get to a point where it's like, mm, maybe not enough. Um, I do want a second alloy, st large storage like that. I just need to like move some stuff around. This area is freed up a little bit now. So I might put uh, a storage down here, just a little one, move the food out, put another of the big one storages there, swap the alloy over to that and then free that up for something else. Yeah, so there's just shuffling, lots of shuffling. Now over in sector three here, I've created an algae farm. So the algae farm uses less water Surprisingly, according to the description at least anyway, an algae farm uses a moderate amount of water to produce a large amount of food, whereas the crop farm produces a significant amount of water to produce a large amount of food. So certainly uh, it's much better. It requires three chips though, uh, more power and more workers and more alloy and just more of everything basically. And uh, we don't have the silicon coming in at this time, so I'm not going to build any little farms off of it just yet, but we are going to get a nine plot farm here of algae and that should hopefully uh, sort our food out for quite some time to come. And it would seem that the ice is starting to run out. Not run out, but be used at a higher frequency now. Um, so, yeah, hopefully we can sort that out. We get the ice from Sector 2 going over there. Anyway, you get it. Um, yeah, we would have to keep an eye on that because it can very easily just run out, run away from you. At the moment we're producing 9.2 ice a cycle based on the current mining. We're producing waste, hydrogen isn't being used at all, and we're at 116% food. Cool. Uh, polymers, carbon is full, alloys are full. This is, this is the golden time. When your ship is safe, it's being maintained, although that went down to minus 92 for some bizarre reason then. Uh, ship is being maintained fine, and... You've got power, you've got trust, everything. Looking at power though, we are going to need to build a new power uh, solar cell soon. And it's it's like a toss-up between putting more solar panels on, which cost more and more polymers. So that costs 225 polymers and five thingies. Uh, or we look into researching the nuclear power plant, which potentially could assuming we can keep it fueled this is this is my worry with nuclear power you need to fuel it which means i need I ships going out finding hydrogen bringing it back task. solar panels don't need that they just need a lot of upfront cost and then they just run they run and run and run so i am hesitant about nuclear power at the moment i really am i don't want to rely on it <laughs> absolutely don't want to rely on it all right, so homelessness situation in Sector 6 is resolved. We're up to 1,000 capacity now, but obviously the more cryopods we keep thawing out, and we've got a lot to do. There's 846 non-workers in this sector. So we need to move the training facility over from here as well. Colonization training center. We need to take that from here, and we need to move that over. I want to set up a drone factory as well over here. Um, that should fit in that space nicely. It should fit in that space nicely, to be honest. But we need that silicon. Alrighty, so the science team. The majority of the Maya bacteria live inside geyser tubes. Smaller groups do exist externally that appear to have it been excluded. Samples from within the geyser reveal that organized society not, that is not only able to propagate other types of bacteria, but also use what can only be described as tools exchanged via vesicular transfer. We theorized the bacteria a bacteriological language and with the help of the PA sent a message to the colony through appropriate stimuli they responded the colony has proposed to follow us on an expedition to the tycoon this will be a monumental undertaking as a single human cycle corresponds to several hundred of theirs we have determined that the best way of transporting the bacteria will be to settle the small colony within the respiratory tract of one of the crew perhaps an extreme method but it will provide the deal conditions for the bacteria an intelligent and aware species. This will surely open the way for new perspectives. Are you fucking with me right now? <laughs> Get the hell out of here. Right, so you want me to take a completely alien, unknown, supposedly intelligent bacteria into the lungs of one of the science team to then bring back to the tycoon. 
they're having a laugh, aren't they? They're having a laugh. Part of me is like, yeah, let's do it. What can happen? What's the worst can happen? I tell you what's the worst can happen. The zombie apocalypse on, on, on a fucking space station. That's what can happen. <laughs> as soon as this bacteria realise that they can probably eat the human body and like it explodes their population and they just get a taste for it. That is, that's it. That's game over. Um, no, no, I don't know. Guys, ah. Oh. <laughs> right, I'll tell you what we're going to do. My answer to this is no, decking leave, right? But for the sake of this content and this series, I want to do it. I want to see what happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the game here. I know. Um, we're going to save it uh, over my existing one. That's fine. Okay. And then we will see what happens. Authorize. This is nuts. Who would authorize that? Only scientists would be like, yeah, let's do it. This is fun. Right? Everybody else is like, bad fecking idea. I've seen every horror movie there is, dude. Don't do it. Just don't do it. What are you doing? <laughs> but they're an intelligent bacteria. Exactly. Which means they're capable of malice. They're capable of evil. They're capable of, you know, seeing you as a lower species. Here we go. Right. Yeah, look at that! <laughs> what a surprise! Final report of the Mendev. This is Ali and Alonso. Vit Vitaly and Jericho are dead. The Mendev has been critically damaged. I'm engaging murderous cryogenic protocols. You're hearing this. Please send help immediately. End of communication. <laughs> Funny that. Oh, did the bacteria attack? Did it? Did it? Yeah! Oh, saw that coming, didn't we? Right, okay. That's fine, because we will just simply load the save now we know now for the sake of you guys you know what happens if you let a bacteria inside your lungs you all die i mean you already knew that anyway but i wanted to obviously prove a point here um leave <laughs> get out hit the hell out uh extract that science and get out and that storm is just effing off and i love it it is so good it's great okay good ah <sighs> well that was fun Okay, so I sent the science ship off to the medical area now. So we arrived at the site. We estimate that two thirds of the district is missing. Remnants of cooling pipes have generated a haze that hangs about the debris and hides the floating corpses. Um, we have identified two viable areas for investigation the ruins of a research facility and an area devoted to medical care. Research facility, please. Let me know how you go on. Thank you very much. The facility has been constructed from more resilient materials than ours than other parts of the ship. Most of its outer structure remain. A lot of the internal hardware does seem to have been laser cut and ripped out. Our team was able to extract some information from the few remaining data consoles. A sealed stasis box was discovered containing what could only be described as a test subject. Having reviewed associated research reports, the team believed that an experiment used Ashton Guy technology and genetic material taken from from shard leaves subject has named as named on the outside of the stasis box appears to be alive but dormant interesting uh retrieve the size of an adult male and is currently dormant the team proposed transferring them to a cryopod and bringing them back on board the tycoon for further study yeah this seems like he's dormant for a good reason probably because he's a psychopath <laughs> Let us investigate the medical district before we make a decision on that one, please. Thank you very much. I just, I think everything in this game now is going to kill me. Um, so I'm going to treat it thusly. No more Mr. Free and Easy, I think, with these freaking missions. I don't want to be losing any more guys to nonsense like that. Thank you very much. Okay, Sector 6 is coming along nicely, although it's already thawed out all the cryopods that we have, so I have redirected one of my cargo ships to prioritize cargo uh cryopods a little higher now so the quicksilver should be delivering them quicksilver deliver them to sector one put them into this one and then they should funnel through to here um i'm going to create a large food storage over here because this population is going to be so high i'm creating a second mess hall uh preemptively another cell housing thing has gone up oh that doesn't look like a nice comfortable night's sleep does it look at this thing Shuffling the pods. <laughs> what? You might have just snoozing away and then it just. <laughs> no! 
They don't want to. Um, so yeah, we are going to turn that food one off, move that over there, then delete this one and put a big one in, in its place. Now that we've got silicon flowing through, we actually got chips coming in, so our chip count is going up, which is lovely. Uh, so yeah, everything is on the up and up, food is still good, 164%. There's our first algae farm look, which looks dope. It looks really cool. Um, so that gives us a negative cycle of water, however. But, given the production of food, I can start maybe dismantling this farm and replace it with an algae one which uses less water, rather than maybe putting in... Let me see, actually, the fusion station. Can I increase? No, nothing, nothing available just yet in the uh, upgrades. Um, oh, they've missed a meal cycle. Whoopsie. This is why I wanted to do a larger one so that I could have a larger amount of food ready to go over here. Damn it. Okie dokie. We'll build some more houses then. This is just the way of things. Yeah, I can't build a cell house there because the uh, the wall. So I may as well do that right up against the wall. Four more houses, uh, three more houses, please. This is our population center here. Uh, so yeah, the, oh, that's the other thing. The colonization training center needs to go here as well. Somewhere, somehow. All right, science team have done the thing. District, uh, the district is in ruins. Team had to stop several times during the investigation to clear away debris. Violent clashes appear to have taken place across the district. It seems that even before the attack, the medical capacity of the Etimananke was oversubscribed. Recovered data suggests that congestion within the ship's care centers worsened over time he was able to recover a number of intact emergency cryopods there we go 270 more pods i don't want to retrieve this guy i'm gonna i'm gonna leave it i don't know he's just i'm gonna leave it <laughs> has passed through the cruc system yay the tycoon is still online congratulations administrator thank you very much thank you i, I, I love it congratulations from the bot there. Beautiful stuff. Okay, is there a planet? I think there's a planet over here or something. Oh, look at that. Big iron, iron eye signature. There was another signature, I swear. Maybe, maybe not. Other than a few more resources, guys. That is all the planets. All right, the habitation sector then. Um, this is, uh, this, this is the Medlev's team. We have entered the habitation sector wreckage. Many mutilated bodies and cryopods float in the void. We have been able to pinpoint the exact area of the unusual readings. Uh, recover the floating cryopods. First of all, let's get them ready for extraction. Oh, damn. We finished our evaluation of the cryopods. We were able to recover a large amount. They're ready for extraction. The recovery area is horrifying. Body parts that float here are mostly from civilians. The dwellings within the habitation sector look more like slums than real housing. Population density must have been extremely high. Somebody showed clear signs of disease and malnutrition. Damn. Push deeper into the structure to reach the source of the unusual readings. That's 795 cryopods. There are a thousand there. There are 795 there. There are 131 there. We better, we, I better get these uh, prioritized higher because, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we'll get the Quicksilver starting to shot them back. We need to get them thawed out. Otherwise, we're going to be here forever, you see, uh, because we've only got one cryogenic station at the moment. That is going to take a long time, and we're already being penalized for being here too long. This is the crazy thing that kind of upsets me a bit at the moment is, is that. So I, uh, I built a hull temple in uh, the population sector. <laughs> you know, we had the cult of the hull. Well, now they've got a little church. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure this will be fine. <laughs> Look at them. <laughs> what is the grinder? Why is there a grinder there? What is going on? What did I build, guys? What did I fucking build? Oh my God. I hope they don't do sacrificial bullshit, I mean, that's all I'm saying. Um, oh, what was that about sector two? Is that sector two is accident and also the health building sector you cannot hospitalize or 
15 injured need to be hospitalized. Okay. Well, why are you not doing better? <laughs> why aren't you just why can't you just get good? Okay, I'm gonna need another. Well, I've got um a health center now. Yeah, there it is, look. So that'll that'll do, and also it can use the railways. So as I'm aware, I keep zooming out, really annoying. It uses the railways. I also need to build a train station in Sector 6. Uh, because the trains mean that things like health centers and fire stations and stuff go across sectors. Which is lovely. I've also now got an exo fighting dome. Provides two stability in the sector. The bonus can be extended to each sector connected via a train station. Which is fabulous. Making progress through the metal debris that lies everywhere has been difficult. The Edmundanke has been constructed from a range of extremely strong alloys. We have come to an area of fallen debris which forms a precious cave around us. Two paths onwards are possible. We could pass through a large section of pipe that has been laser cut. Temperature analysis of the cuts indicate they happened some time ago. Ultimately, there is a reinforced tunnel leading away from here. Its sides covered in bullet holes. We could continue to use drilling rig, but one of these paths will surely save us time. Oh! <laughs> I would say piping because piping is everything and there's only one turn on the piping the laser cut hole is a perfect circle email passage to continue to drill towards the source of the reason or proceed through the reinforced tunnel and with numerous bullet holes line the wall pipes pipes for the win come on Come on, pipes. Okay, so the last bit of the uh is the command center, I think. It's called Lethal Weapon. Right, we have arrived on site. This part of the Etamanenke is a real piece of Swiss cheese. Paradoxically, there is little debris surrounding it. After rapid survey, we've identified two areas of interest. A still accessible docking port and a communications area. Uh, communications area, please. Let's see what they come up with. So the communication room is a theater of atrocities. Frozen severed body parts flow everywhere in a grisly spectacle. The team found that the Edmundanke had implemented a system of non-computerized communication in the battle. The UN crew had discovered that the messages they were sending and receiving via devices and hardware in this area were being tampered with. This falsification of information caused a cascading series of accidents and prompted the move to the new comm system. Something was hacking or mimicking the Edmundanke's communication protocols perfectly. Investigate the intact docking port then. That would be these drones and this BMS ship that we've come across, this uh, black market syndicate. They uh, they seem to have technology beyond the, the combined cooperative force of, of, of Earth, which seems mental. Absolutely crazy. My ships are going further and further away now to get resources. Now that this area has opened up, I'm thinking of moving the Tycon up to P-42, which also needs to be investigated. So I think once... Uh, the science ship is done here. Send it back to the Tycoon. Send the Tycoon up there. Then around to Kruk P38. Collect all the resources up here. And then finally P37. Collect these final resources and 43 before we then leave. Although that, that's the plan, I think, anyway. We'll see how it actually goes. Uh, so, we are stationed by the docking port. It has accumulated a huge mass of debris at the bottom of it. Broken vessels, corpses, damaged cryopods, all have been frozen into a horrible amalgam. Ships have entered the port too, quickly, crashing inside while attempting to flee. The docking bay has come under heavy projectile fire, which tore apart, tore open the hull, and breached the protective plating of the Etamananke. We have discovered an intact, unexploded BMS missile embedded in the wreckage. We should investigate this further. Initiate a controlled detonation of the missile. Defuse the missile or transport the missile. I mean... I try and defuse it, but I've got a bad feeling about this. I think I'm about to lose another science ship. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, this game is just such a dick. Just go, bam! <laughs> An accident has occurred in the tycoon. Yeah, yeah it's going to happen somewhere else in a minute. <laughs> We have managed to defuse the missile. The technology contained within is not only more advanced than the onboard tycoon uh, or even the Etamenenke, but it is of a structure and logic belonging to a completely different scientific paradigm. We have transmitted data and schematics to the tycoon lab for further analysis. 
15 science ready for analysis as well. Okay, so I'm guessing the old tech lab wants to talk to me right now. Yes, it does. Um, we now have enough data to, to analyze the Perenesi missile technology associated research project can be launched by the tech lab, blah, 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 blah. With this, we should be able to set up a countermeasure to protect ourselves from the Perenesi wasted weaponry. Missile threat analysis upgrade unlocked for the Perenesi. Research that next, please. 32 research. I did start this area with like 300 or so research and have eaten through it all with the last thing uh, to be unlocked, which is the observa observatory here, apart from whatever's this question mark, and of course, apart from sub technologies of everything. So it's getting there. It is getting there. Okay. They should research fine. Everything's ticking along, apart from our. The alloy amounts, the iron isn't coming in anymore, and I'm a little bit worried about that. I have got one cargo ship that should be prioritizing iron, but uh, as everything is getting further and further away now, apart from the cryopod stuff, this box of carbon for some reason, <laughs> we're going to have to move the, um, the tycoon. So we need 4.1 cycles of battery power. This area in particular is not looking good on battery power. So um, it's funny because it has five batteries. I could turn all the factories off in fairness while it moves. That wouldn't be too difficult. Um, and that should, in theory, keep it uh, to 4.1. 3.9 in here as well. Again, we could do the same thing. We can turn things off to get it moving. OK, let's just go ahead and move the Tycoon up to Kruk P42. That is 4.1 cycles. Yes, please. Let's go. Got to move where the resources are. This is going to damage the hull, but it'll be fine. Okay, let's get these things turned off then. 6.8, 4.2, 6.7, 2 point one. Here we go. Let's turn off the factories first of all. Takes up to 2.4. We 2.5. The hospital, there's nobody there anyway. 3.2. Drone bay, 4.0. And. Turn off the probe launcher. 4.2. There we go. There we go. And this is 3.3. So we can turn off uh, the algae farm. Has in the and the mushroom farm here, which hasn't got rid of any of its food for a long, long time. 0.8. 3.5, 5.8, 2.9, about halfway. In theory, we should make it. In theory. I do like in the external view here, you can watch the tycoon fly. And it does look pretty dope. It does look dope. <laughs> what a monster of a machine this is. The solar panel is really starting to, you know, come away from the hole now. I understand, it's got forward momentum. Oh no, it's braking. Look at that. It's so cool. Oh, it's here. Wow, that thing turns on a dime. Damn. <laughs> Very nice. Awesome. Okay, let's turn the factories back on then. So we now have an observatory as well, which does provide another one stability in the sector that reduces the max hull integrity by 25. Just 25 points. Yeah. Yikes. And of course, we've got the Exo Fighting Dome, provides two stability in the sector. The bonus can be extended to each sector connected via train station. So that is a massive thing as well. It's huge. We'd have to go in this sector. I don't know where else it would go. Crazy big. <laughs> it looks awesome, though. It's huge structure. 450 freaking alloys. Damn. There's one thing about this game that's slightly more terrifying than everything else, and that is building solar panels. An accident has occurred in Simplest of things. But during the solar panel build, my hull is losing 92 hull points a second. <laughs> or it feels like a second, at least anyway. And I just watched that red bar just going, la 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 la. <laughs> They're done. The great thing is that, well, I say great thing. One of the things is, is when the hull integrity is lower, 
it's easy, easier for the EVA guys to find hull breaches, and so their efficiency goes through the roof. And then, you know, it goes from plus three to plus 28, for example, because the hull integrity is so much lower. Oof. Okay, we have another batch of power, but I am also building a nuclear power plant over here. And I have so much freaking silicon. <laughs> so much silicon, it's crazy. I've built a large silicon storage. There's three smaller silicon storages, and there's 200 in the cargo bay as well. It's, it's, yeah, it's getting a bit silly. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of silicon, and I need to bring in hydrogen. These drones are freaking awesome. They, they are so fast. I mean, I got the speed turned right up now, but they are so fast. It's amazing. They just deliver things. Right, science ship. Um, to Krupp P-42, please. Let us an analyze this planet. I think this is where we're going to be able to set a colony. So, yeah. Established. Um, so, the we have landed on P-42. The planet is bathed in toxic yellow haze, which severely reduces visibility. First measurements have recorded trace amounts of oxygen on the planet's atmosphere. We have also noted the presence of a few species of bacteria on the shores of Madder. Um, one of the cyanide oceans. <laughs> Okay, establish basic colonization infrastructure because they ain't staying here. Yeah, they're not they're not staying here at all. Um the whale. You'll do. Go on. They're, I will repatriate them from that. That's that's crazy. <laughs> it's a rubbish planet. And it's a rubbish planet. So we're up here at Crook P42. Next, we're going to move to Crook P38, and that takes 5.1 cycles. I have an objective to get enough batteries that at least four sectors can run for five cycles. So I've unlocked tier two batteries, uh, which seem to store 300 power um, compared to the 100 that the smaller ones do, but obviously are quite a much bigger footprint there. So yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and get a storage up here. I don't think that it's big enough for a large storage in any orientation, unfortunately. So we're just going to get a regular one. Ugh, that sucks. That uh, really does suck, doesn't it? Yeah, re regular storage there. Happy New Year and Thanks. Yeah. Face that way. It's lame. Uh, but we can then tell our Sector 2 ships to start picking up some hydrogen and make it a priority. We can also say hydrogen transfer from 1, because just 33 just sat there over there not doing anything, to 2 as well once this thing's actually built, of course. At the moment, um, Sector 1 is holding on to all the alloy. Let's get that exporting over. Lovely, lovely. Okay. Waste is positive. So this guy is producing like a bunch of alloys every every now and again. The temporary test colony has now been established. Colonists will periodically transmit their progress. These provide us valuable field data. Okay, cool. Um, leave the planet. We will see what happens shortly, I guess. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're pretty much done in this sector, I think. It is just a case of mopping up the resources that we can. And uh, I'm going to move the Tycoon around here to do that. And then I think we're done. I think we can get out of here. We've got a, about 700 cryopods still to awaken. And I've got to sort the battery situation out as well. So to just catch you up on all the sectors, I'm building a spaceport a docking bay here in Sector 6 now as well to deal with uh, the colonization and cryo population stuff. But this sector is very heavy cell housing and housing. It now has a population... Uh, it can almost sustain 2,000 people on its own. So a little bit more work in this sector, and then it will be able to sustain 2,000. This can do seven cycles on batteries. This can do seven cycles on batteries, although it only has one steel mill running at the moment. We need to move quickly because ultimately, I mean, we've got plenty of alloys, but iron is starting to run out in this system now. Um, and there's still some pockets loitering around and, you know, uh, we can definitely mop those up. But obviously, the longer we take here, the more likely that is going to run out. That keeps happening. Um, sector three, sector two, sorry. Um, starting to collect some hydrogen here. The efficiency of this area is not great. I'm going to be honest, it's garbage, uh, to be frank. 
the spacing around these roads is atrocious and I hate it. <laughs> I'm not sure what to do about it. And yeah, there we go. I think that might be big enough now for one of these, but that leaves a two wide gap, which can't be used by anything. I can't rotate it that way because it's too wide. So, and the battery, as you can see, leaves a one wide gap as well. So, oh my God, it's an absolute nightmare. And uh, I don't know what to do with this area at all. So I'll figure it out. Uh, it might be that I take, I mean, that's the same width, so I don't know. We could use maybe, I can only put one of these down, unfortunately, five by six. Yeah, so it will fit in there. We might move that and put a battery down there. Might be a good idea. Anyway, I'll figure it out and we can turn the nuclear power plant on when we have a surplus of hydrogen, which we already do have, to be honest, and we need some power. This area is continuing to be food, but we're 127 yet, so I don't need another algae farm just yet. But in order to maintain water values here, I have upgraded my ice thingies. Uh, we might need to slowly demolish this while building this and then change this into an algae farm. So it uses less water but produces the same food. And there we go. We're still defrosting everybody. We have four sectors open and only two sectors left to open. And the entire tycoon is functional. But we are done with this sector, I think, other than the resources. So I'm going to leave the episode here. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. And hopefully I will see you next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.